Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make pace counting beads. This is a method that was used by the military back in Vietnam, and they remain a good backup method if you're lost without something like a GPS. They're basically used one of two different ways. You can either measure your paces or measure the distance walked and do the calculations in your head. Both require you to know what your pace length is, and so it's important to measure that ahead of time before you have to use these in the wild. A basic pace counter is made up of 13 beads and a rope that they're tied around. And in our version today, we're gonna make the entire thing out of paracord. Let's dive in. So for this project, I'm gonna be using five feet of black and 10 feet of olive drab for a total of 15. Though if you're an experienced knot tire, you may be able to get away with less cord by constructing the knots smaller in your hand. We're gonna start with this black cord as it's gonna form the base of our pace counter. We're gonna begin by tying a diamond knot. So that's done in our hand. And we have videos on this. So if you want it slower, you can go ahead and watch those. We're just gonna construct it fast here. And we wanna tighten this knot down with enough slack on our loop end to be able to cow hitch it onto a piece of gear. So mine is good where it's at. Then we're gonna leave some space to make our ranger beads and we'll eventually tie another diamond knot down farther. So bringing out our olive drab cord. You can either cut eight inches of paracord for each ranger bead or you can leave it on your hank while you tie your knot so that you don't waste any. Just be aware that that's gonna take longer to pull the rest of that cord through your knot. So now we'll take one of our short pieces. I went ahead and cut mine down to eight inches. And on one end, I'm gonna melt it flat. So I just wanna melt it for quite a while because um, we want to make a little bead of plastic that's not gonna pull through our knot. And then I don't push it quite as flat as I do on some projects. I just do it really lightly. And that way I have no sharp edges, but I still have a nice flat piece of plastic that isn't gonna pull through. If I push it harder, then I get these scratchy edges and that's gonna cause our beads to get stuck as we're sliding them on our black. So now I'll take that squished edge and put that over the top like that. Wrap it around the bottom to come up on the left. Round again to come up on the right. And we'll kind of turn it over this direction. We want to go over this first cord and then through here. This left side loop. So now it's attached and it's not gonna come off. Keep on turning around. And we wanna take this left side loop that we just went through and put it through this right side loop. So we might need to enlarge those just a little bit. Poke that on through until it comes out the other side. Then we'll take the same long cord that we've been working with and put it through that loop on the right. And as a last move, we're gonna take that short side Again, we might need to readjust just a little bit and put that underneath towards the left side until it comes out right there. Now our ranger bead is complete. We just need to tighten it down and we wanna bring all the slack to this side here. So we'll find that end that we just tucked through and kind of hold on to that as we begin to tighten it down. So find out where that comes out the other side. It's this one right here. Continue pulling out the slack as we go around. We just wanna be careful that that end doesn't pull through. And then if we've done it right, our flat end should be just almost hidden beneath our knot. And all the slack should be on the right side. So I've only wasted about two and a half inches of cord there. But again, if you wanna waste even less than that, you can keep your hank attached to this side as you're making the knot and just clip it right there when you're done. So we'll do that with our short one. 
And then with this side as well, we want to be careful that we don't flatten it too much and create some sharp edges on that paracord. That's going to keep our knot from sliding smoothly. You also want to be careful to not melt the center strands at all. So sometimes what I'll do is pull it all the way to the end where I know it's going to be cut off and use that as my melting area before I slide it back down to where it's going to live. We need to make 13 of these in total, but we're going to start by making just nine of them because we'll add another diamond knot at the end of the nine. There we go, we've got our first nine done. And we, what we wanna do at this point is just leave a small space and then make another diamond knot. So basically we want enough space to move each of these to use as kind of like an abacus. So as long as we have a bit of a gap there, we can go ahead and make a diamond knot just a little ways down. Once our diamond knot is tightened down, we can go ahead and make four more of those ranger beads. So we made our last four, and we can just finish that up with one more diamond knot, like before. So there we go, we are done. If you're wondering why there's nine and four instead of 10 and five, basically this is used to measure every 100 meters walked, or sometimes every 100 steps or so. Um, but the, the more common measurement is finding the number of steps you walk in 100 meters and then just moving a bead every time you walk 100 meters. So this top one is your ones place. So this is 100 meters walked, 200 meters. Then once we get all the way down to here, that's 900 meters. And then for a thousand, we move these back up to the top and move one down on our bottom section. So this will go up to 5,000 meters walked. It's just important to know ahead of time how many steps you take in 5,000 meters. And if you're going uphill or downhill, that number is gonna change. And so you wanna practice that ahead of time as well. So again, we put a couple links down in the description if you wanna learn more about this method of land navigation and distance measurement. And we also have this as a free printable PDF on our website if you wanna take this with you wherever you plan on getting lost. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.